The Yorkshire Terrier originated in Yorkshire. In the mid-19th century, workers from Scotland came to Yorkshire in search of work and brought with them several varieties of terrier. Breeding of the Yorkshire Terrier was principally accomplished by the people, mostly operatives in cotton and woolen mills, in the counties of Yorkshire and Lancashire. In the 1800s, miners wanting to develop a ratting terrier, bred black and tan terriers with the Paisley and Clydesdale terriers. Details are scarce. Mrs. A. Foster is quoted as saying in 1886, if we consider that the mill operatives who originated the breed were nearly all ignorant men, unaccustomed to imparting information for public use, we may see some reason why reliable facts have not been easily attained. The breed comes from two distinct dogs, a male named Old Crab, a female named Kitty, and another female whose name is not known. The Paisley Terrier, a smaller version of the Sky Terrier that was bred for a beautiful long silky coat, also figured into the early dogs. Some authorities believe that the Maltese was used as well. They were all originally bred from Scotch Terriers meaning dogs from Scotland, not today's Scottish Terrier, and shown as such the name Yorkshire Terrier was given to them on account of their being improved so much in Yorkshire. Yorkshire Terriers were shown in a dog show category, class, at the time called, rough and broken coated, broken haired Scotch and Yorkshire Terriers. Hugh Dalziel, writing in 1878, says that, the classification of these dogs at shows and in the Kennel Club stud book is confusing and absurd, in lumping together these different types. In the early days of the breed, almost anything in the shape of a terrier having a long coat with blue on the body and fawn or silver-colored head and legs, with tail docked and ears trimmed, was received and admired as a Yorkshire Terrier. But in the late 1860s, a popular Paisley-type Yorkshire Terrier show dog named Huddersfield Ben, owned by a woman living in Yorkshire, Mary Ann Foster, was seen at dog shows throughout Great Britain, and defined the breed type for the Yorkshire Terrier. Huddersfield Ben was a Yorkshire Terrier whose portrait was painted by George Earle and in 1891 an authority on the breed wrote, Huddersfield Ben was the best stud dog of his breed during his lifetime, and one of the most remarkable dogs of any pet breed that ever lived, and most of the show specimens of the present day have one or more crosses of his blood in their pedigree. A show winner, Huddersfield Ben, through his puppies, helped define the Yorkshire Terrier breed. He is still referred to as, father of the breed. The Yorkshire Terrier was introduced in North America in 1872 and the first Yorkshire Terrier was registered with the American Kennel Club, AKC, in 1885. During the Victorian era, the Yorkshire Terrier was a popular pet, and show dog in England, and as Americans embraced Victorian customs, so too did they embrace the Yorkshire Terrier. The breed's popularity dipped in the 1940s, when the percentage of small breed dogs registered fell to an all-time low of 18% of total registrations. Smokey, a Yorkshire Terrier and famous war dog from World War II, is credited with beginning a renewal of interest in the breed. The AKC ranked the Yorkshire Terrier as the sixth most popular purebred in the United States in 2012 and 2013. The Yorkshire Terrier, often shortened as Yorkie, is one of the smallest dog breeds of the terrier type and indeed of any dog breed. The breed developed during the 19th century in Yorkshire, England. Ideally its maximum size is 7 pounds. A popular companion dog, the Yorkshire Terrier has also been part of the development of other breeds, such as the Silky. Terrier. Most have a black and tan coat, but they are also known to have a silver gray or a blonde coat. Yorkshire Terriers are playful and energetic dogs. They often exhibit separation anxiety when left alone, which is a reason that some owners keep two dogs. Health issues often seen in the Yorkshire Terrier include bronchitis, lymphangiectasia, cortosystemic shunt, cataracts, and keratitis sicca. Additionally, Yorkies often have a delicate digestive system, with vomiting or diarrhea resulting from consumption of foods outside of a regular diet. The relatively small size of the Yorkshire Terrier means that it usually has a poor tolerance for anesthesia. Additionally, a toy dog such as the Yorkie is more likely to be injured by falls, other dogs, and owner clumsiness. Injection reactions, inflammation or hair loss at the site of an injection, can occur. In addition, allergies can cause skin to be dry, itchy and or red. The lifespan of a Yorkie is 13 to 20 years. Undersized Yorkies under 3 pounds or 1.4 kilograms generally have a shorter lifespan, as they are especially prone to health problems such as chronic diarrhea and vomiting, are more sensitive to anesthesia, and are more easily injured. Low blood sugar in puppies, or transient juvenile hypoglycemia, 
is caused by fasting too much time between meals. In rare cases, hypoglycemia may continue to be a problem in mature, usually very small, Yorkies. It is often seen in Yorkie puppies at 5 to 16 weeks of age. Very tiny Yorkie puppies are especially predisposed to hypoglycemia because a lack of muscle mass makes it difficult to store glucose and regulate blood sugar. Factors such as stress, fatigue, a cold environment, poor nutrition, and a change in diet or feeding schedule may bring on hypoglycemia. Low blood sugar can also be the result of a bacterial infection, parasite or portosystemic liver shunt. Hypoglycemia causes the puppy to become drowsy, listless glassy-eyed, shaky, uncipoglycemic attack, the puppy usually has very pale or gray gums. The puppy also may not eat unless force-fed. Hypoglycemia and dehydration seem to go hand in hand, and force-feeding or injecting fluids may also be necessary. Additionally, a hypoglycemic Yorkie may have a lower than normal body temperature and, in extreme cases, may have a seizure or go into a coma. A dog showing symptoms should be given sugar in the form of corn syrup or Nutri-Cal and be treated by a veterinarian immediately, as prolonged or recurring attacks of hypoglycemia can permanently damage the dog's brain. In severe cases, it can be fatal. For adult Yorkshire Terriers, the American Kennel Club places importance on coat color, quality, and texture. According to the Kennel Club, UK, the hair must be glossy, fine, straight, and silky. Traditionally the coat is grown out very long and is parted down the middle of the back, but, must never impede movement. The hair of the Yorkshire Terrier can be used to determine content of metals in the dog organism. From the back of the neck to the base of the tail, the coat should be a dark gray to a black color, and the hair on the tail should be a darker black. On the head, high chest and legs, the hair should be a bright, rich tan, darker at the roots than in the middle, that shades into a lighter tan at the tips, but not for all dogs. Also, in adult dogs there should be no black hairs intermingled with any of the tan-colored fur. The fine, straight, silky coat is considered hypoallergenic. Adult Yorkshire Terriers whose coat colors deviate from the standard, or that have woolly or extra fine coats, are still Yorkshire Terriers. The only difference is that atypical Yorkshire Terriers should not intentionally be bred. In addition, care may be more difficult. Fur, woolly, or, cottony, textured coats, are coats that are overly fine. One of the reasons given for not breeding, off-colored, Yorkies is that the color could be a potential indicator of a genetic defect that may affect the dog's health. A careful health screening can clarify if any health risks exist. Coats may vary in color. For example, a mature Yorkie may have a silver blue with light brown, while another might have a black and creamy color. The long coat on the Yorkshire Terrier requires regular brushing. 